one is that we are going to be recording tonight's session um, so that we can show it to people. Um, you know, we can put it on Facebook and things like that for people who couldn't come. So. Feel free to just keep them. I'm still seeing people. I just gotta um, look at making sure everyone's. Okay, so I've got everybody um, muted, but you can unmute yourself when you need to talk or um, by just hitting your mic and it will. Um, and again, you can always, um, right, it's Carrie, Susa. I should know that, Carrie. Um, Carrie, what you don't know is that Carrie is my childhood nickname. So I should be remembering <laughs> your first name pretty well. Good to see you or hear or see your, um, there you are. <laughs> there you are, Carrie. Um, good to see you. Um, and I'm just gonna welcome, I'm gonna wait one more minute and then I am gonna officially start this show. Um, but I just wanna give one more minute We'll be at 5.35 and then I think we can roll and we can start um, because everyone will be able to see it. I did start the recording and I'm sure some people will be joining us throughout and that's great. Um, the other thing I'm gonna be doing in just a minute is sharing my screen. We have a little um, PowerPoint that I'm gonna start with, but um, Mainly, we hope to spend time just in dialogue with all of you tonight after we do, after I get through that part. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll proceed. I've also got people like texting me and I might have staff text me tonight. So we'll see. All right, so I am going to get this party started. I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to reintroduce or introduce myself. I'm Carolyn Sheehan. I am a founder and executive director at Blackstone Academy. My administrative partner is on the Spanish speaking Zoom right now, um, Kylie Carpenter, um, who is the principal. And um, we will, so we put this to, um, presentation together um, and we will do our best tonight to, boy, tell us what you know, but also answer questions and hear from you about your thoughts and concerns and ideas and everything else. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to share my screen and um, get this, little PowerPoint up and I am hoping that maybe somebody could just let me know that they're seeing it yes I'm seeing it great so and if for some reason you're not seeing it then um, well we'll do our best um, you're probably also seeing my chat box right the people box, so let me get rid of that for the moment. Um, but we'll go through. Okay, I am going to just try to go through this pretty quickly. Um, so obviously we know that families and all of us are anxious about returning to school um, for many reasons and in many different ways. And we know students are as well. Um, and Weeks back, 90 parents responded to a uh, survey we sent out, which is amazing, and we really thank you because that um, your your thoughts and the things you shared really helped us in preparing the draft plan that we wrote. Um, and I also want to just say that um, I know we have parents who are veteran parents, you know, been with us before, even maybe with other students, um, but we also have probably some new parents joining us who are going to be uh, parents for the first time at um, 
at Blackstone. So um, we'll be getting you even more information if you're in that category. Um, uh, but just to know that um, we're around all summer. I hope to take some days off in August, but it won't be that many. There'll always be somebody around to be able to answer questions or, or speak to you. Um, I think most of you also are quite aware that, you know, when COVID-19 hit, um, Providence, Pawtucket, and Central Falls were the most affected in terms of uh, the number of cases in the communities. And, you know, even though things have gotten, thank God, a lot better, um, it certainly hasn't gone away and it hasn't left where we are. So it's with that in mind, and there's a lot of planning being done statewide, but I want you to know that we've also really been looking at our local community and um, our students and as we think about, think about this plan. Um, so the first thing I want to let you know is that we were, we were asked um, in June, late in June, to submit at least three draft plans for school reopening. Okay. And we were given lots of rules and lots of guidance, but the guidance changed a lot like every week. And, um, you know, there was a lot of rules to follow, I'll just say. Um, as I mentioned, we also had been serving and talking to lots of folks in our community, in our school community. So families and students and student groups, uh, teachers and staff, um, just to start to get a handle on, on what made sense for people and what would make, make sense in our plan. Um, so I wanna talk tonight about the first draft that we've submitted and um, we're going to be, I, we hadn't put it up yet because we were hoping we were gonna get feedback from the state <laughs> by now. Um, I was told that we would be getting it before tomorrow, but we haven't gotten it. So as soon as we're done with this meeting, I'm gonna put this, our like 45 um, page draft up on our Facebook page and on our website. And if you wanna read through it or any sections of it, it there it is. Um, but we were also told that this is supposed to be a, um, a document that is changing and growing all the time. So um, know that based on tonight and based on lots of things that may happen, um, you know, what you see tonight might, some, some of it could well change. Um, so that's, that's what, what we're doing. Um, and... I will also say that, you know, we've, we've really tried hard to stay on top of what's happening. But um, for those of you who don't know, as a charter school, we're a public school. And I'm sorry, I thought everybody was on mute, but I'm starting to hear people talking. Um, could people please, if, if um, you don't think you're on mute, try to get on mute or um, take a look at that because I could just hear a lot of people. Anyhow, um, so we, we will have answers to some questions, but there are some questions that the governor and the commissioner at, um, at RIDE or our State Department of Education is getting back to us on or will there's decisions that they're going to make that we don't have a lot of control over um although we are in constant communication with them so um i just want you to know that that we we'll be able to tell you a lot of things but uh some of it they've told us we have to wait and see on um so number one we want you to know that safety is gonna be first at Blackstone. Um, even, even if we think that the state has told us, oh, you know, you can do this, we're going to do what we think is right for our school community and our building. And I think that, um, you know, the governor and the commissioner of ed education have been clear in directing us that we should do that, right? If, there might be something that works for one place that doesn't work 
in, um, for another. So, um, and we're gonna be guided through um, the Rhode Island Department of Health, organizations like the CDC, but also um, we've got local health experts in, you know, who are advising, for instance, the cities of Central Falls and Pawtucket. They're also gonna weigh in as to um, the ways we should keep things safe. Um, so, um, you know, we'll, that's gonna be the first priority. Um, so we were asked to tell them three different ways that we could reopen school. And we also were told that we should tell them um, that, that be ready for, you know, to be able to have to do one plan at one time. And then if there's a reason why people can't be in the building or not as many people can be in the building, um, that we may have to quickly switch to another plan. Um, what I want to share is that we weren't asked by RIDE to give them our ideal plans. Um, we tried to do as well as we could on that, but they gave us certain constraints. So I can talk more after this about, you know, what I think might be the best way to go, but we'll see what we're able to do. Um, so the first plan that, uh, the first thing that we knew was that because of the square footage of our building, right off the bat, and because um, we have students from Central Falls who take school buses, uh, we knew that we could not have a safe operation for in-person in school. Um, well, COVID is going on the way it is with everybody here every day at the same time. So we've told the state that. The other reason for that is as a high school, um, you know, students have lots of different classes. They're not in a stable group all the time. And so they did give high schools some leeway and to some extent middle schools um, some leeway in that um, because there's students have to take certain classes, right, to graduate. And, you know, our older students have to make sure that they have certain classes um, that they don't have to worry about getting into. So no matter what the plan is, students are going to be educated every day, but there's going to have to be limited days when they're in the building um, until we know that it's safe to do, do differently. Um, so the first plan that we'll talk about is our partial in-person plan. With that plan, we would have two grades in the building at the same time. We would start out by having um, the ninth and 10th graders here on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we would separate them by floor. And then on Thursday and Friday, we would have the 11th and 12th graders. Well, one grade is here, um, the other grades are learning um, from home. They'll be on distance learning those days. And I'll talk about how that's going to work uh, later. Um, on Monday, we want to have a flex day. And when I say that, we've been, we've been doing a lot of planning around what that flex day might be like. But we know that there are many students that would really benefit from being here in person more. And distance learning is extraordinarily hard for, or there also might be times when it's important to get a certain group of students in for some in-person learning. Um, so we would use Mondays for that. It would be a flex day. And um, otherwise students would be able to reach their teachers and advisors on Mondays. Um, through, um, you know, through office hours that would be, that they would schedule in advance. Um, the other plan that would be an in-person plan would be a bit more limited. Under that plan, we would have um, just one grade in the building per day. It would be ninth graders on Tuesdays, 11th graders Wednesdays, 10th graders Thursdays, 12th graders Fridays. And again, Monday is a flex day. Um, and they would be at home three to four uh, days a week. 
um, they'd be on distance learning, but they, we would have s some contact with them. Um, and then finally, we would have a distance learning plan where all students would be on distance learning, um, learning actively from um, home and on Monday, again, there would be a flex day, whether it would be for people to come in or not, again, would depend on where we're at with COVID at that time and what the governor tells us we can do or can't do. Um, but um, again, we would try our best to do that. Um, so this is what the schedule would look like. And I think something which looks an awful lot like our schedule looks like when we're in regular times. Um, when you see the blocks and they say B, for instance, 820, that means like your, your child may have English on B block. So you can see on this schedule um, that they would have English those four days, but at different times. Um, and what we really wanna do differently this time is we want to raise our expectations. And what we're hoping is that when students are learning from home, they'll be able to learn in real time and their teachers will be able to be on in real time so that even if you're somebody who's at home, you can watch your teacher teach um, through your Chromebook and you'll be following the same schedule and it wouldn't be much different um, than if you were in school. Um, so that's what we're hoping we can pull off is, is to be able to, and I think what happened when we were on our regular, on the distance learning in the spring was that because we had to go out so suddenly, we weren't able to adequately plan um, so that we could expect students. Um, and even for family situations, it was just pretty crazy. Um, a lot of our students had to help younger siblings. They weren't available in real time. We're gonna have to watch all that, right? Um, we will record classes, but we are really hoping that we're going to be able to have, um, have students more on a regular schedule every day that doesn't look so different than it would otherwise. Um, one, of the, one of our challenges is that we're, we're actually a little confused about whether the state is going to be telling us, telling everyone in the state that you need to be on, you know, your partial or your somewhat in-person plan or what. And we also don't really know um, uh, when they're gonna tell us. Um, we were at one point told that the governor would make a decision by August 17th. I think she's getting a lot of feedback that that's probably not soon enough. Um, so we're hopeful that we're gonna hear a little bit more on that. Um, but the second we know more, we're gonna be communicating to you and to the students. Um, so this is very important. Um, we thought something that made sense was that any family would be able to choose if we are in person learning, if you're somebody who for whatever set of reasons does not feel comfortable sending your student to school and we're here, we are trying to set it up in a way that your student could um, participate fully and get everything that they get normally by, um, by just logging on and following their schedule. And our expectation would be that they are present in class on time, um, if that's the case. If they're able to, obviously, if somebody's sick and isn't in, that's a different story. Um, but we, that's what we're hoping. Um, and we are predicting that we will have people who will choose that option, um, depending on, you know, uh, and it may not be just the student's health situation. There might be somebody they live with that, you know, you're just feeling like, hey, my mom lives with us and she's very compromised and we just can't afford to have anybody getting exposed and being with more than a very small group at a time. 
um, that's, um, we want you to know you'll have that option at Blackstone Inn. Um, masks, okay, so the state of Rhode Island sent out guidance um, that, um, where they said that masks were optional. Um, they're not gonna be optional here. And the reason that they're not gonna be is because we feel that as a high school, we've got most of the folks who are in the building, whether they're 13 or, you know, 60, um, that they, we mostly have adult bodies walking into the building. And if what we know with COVID um, so far is that, you know, the theory is that the spread happens um, mostly through vapors in the air. And we feel like even though um, it is likely that um, teenagers are not going to get it at the rate that adults, and it's also likely, maybe, we don't really know this, um, they might not spread it um, as, as much, but we, the research is pretty unclear um, and uh, new on that. Um, we feel like everybody needs to just pretend we're all adults, right? Because our students, we expect that from our students anyhow. Um, you know, a lot of them are going to jobs where they have to wear their masks. And um, we think it's not going to be the easiest thing. We will not penalize someone, but we're going to ask that if a student has a really hard time, um, because for some people it's just too uncomfortable, um, then we're going to ask that the student learn from home um, rather than after they've tried and we've worked with them and tried to get it to work. Um, we're going to ask that, that, you know, we don't want to fight. It's not something we want to argue over or fight over. It's something that we want to just, we want to keep people safe. And um, from the research we've read and been told, um, that's, that's a pretty important um, strategy to do so. So they will wear masks. We, I think we already have 10,000 masks, paper masks in the building. Um, students can bring their own masks or we can provide them with masks, but we'll have plenty of masks. And we'll also, we're gonna be working on um, how to do mask breaks. We know, I know, I was here um, a couple of weeks ago, we had teacher meetings on Zoom but I was doing a lot of talking with my mask on because I happened to be in a room with other people at times. And after a certain amount of time, it got really difficult or hot and I needed a little break. Um, and so we're gonna be working on how to do that. And we're going to use our students to help us um, with that in preparation. Um, this, <laughs> this is a very important question. What happens if someone has access symptoms or is positive for COVID-19? So yeah. um, we are going to be getting official guidance on that from the state. Um, so far, what they've done is given us the guidance that they've given child care centers. I've also read Massachusetts guidance on that. What I will tell you is that um, obviously, if we know that somebody's positive, then we have to notify um, families that we have somebody either among the staff or student body that's positive and that um, your son and daughter may have been uh, in contact with them. As you know, we have to protect privacy. So there'll be things we can't tell you, but we will immediately tell you when we know that and we will um, communicate it to you in every way that we can. Um, and um, in, in that case, you know, the rule is that people have to quarantine um, for 14 days. However, it might be the case where somebody was tested on a certain date and they're gonna be clear before 14 days. Um, if no one has symptoms, there'll be some more guidance to show, okay, when can they come back? When can people come back in the building? It gets complicated when you're working with this many people. So we, we have a tracking system set up um, so that um, 
I guess a few things I'm going to say just off the record that probably are not, um, you know, are not in the official PowerPoint is that, um, you know, uh, Paul Pasaba, who's one of our talented math um, teachers, is also happens to be a, a tech genius, and he has already set up a, a system in our in PowerSchool, our student information system, where we can easily see right away which students any student or teacher would have been in contact with. We'll also have some protocols within the building for travel, so we'll know pretty well where students um, have been. Um, but um, we're also going to have to take a look at students that and staff members that we find out have symptoms or someone they live with does. Um, again, there, there'll be protocols for all of that. And we will um, take the safe route <laughs> before, you know, I, I guess is, is my answer for the moment. Um, we, what's happening right now is that the teachers are working really hard on trying to deliver distance learning in, in the best way humanly possible. Um, and spending a lot of time this summer consulting with anyone who's available and working with each other on how to do that. Um, one of the things that, that um, we've already planned is all kinds of ways to particularly start the year out with very high interest um, curriculum projects um, and to try to even, particularly in the lower grades, to try to minimize the number of unrelated projects they may have. So if there's an opportunity, for instance, for English and social studies to work on one thing and meet their standards that way, that's the kind of thing we're gonna try to do. It will only make everybody's life easier. Um, we also are looking at ways that we're going to be using Google Classroom um, across the board so that it's less confusing for students and they get less emails and all those things. And finally, st again, students who need more help, making sure we're figuring out every way that we possibly can to get them um, that help. So um, we sort of took a look at what are the response, what are the things that we all need to do to make this work? And I'm focusing on the distant learning part because for me, it's hard to believe that we're not going to end up spending some amount of our time on distance learning or some days on it. So, and I, I mean, you already know that students likely will be, they will be home for certain days of the week, depending on what grade they're in. Um, so here's some things we want to talk about. Um, obviously, we expect them to keep up with their learning and their assignments. Um, towards the last quarter, we offered something called a COVID <laughs> uh, ink option for grading and a pass, or you know, there was some some flex, very flexible. Uh, we're going to try to avoid that. We're going to try to keep people on task. We also are going to have a better way to track daily attendance and assignment completion. So we're going to expect people, you know, the students to behave more in the way that they were in regular school. Um, get your work on time or, you know, um, and we'll give you the same flexibilities we normally would, but not so much beyond that. Um, probably the biggest thing that we need to talk about and prepare for is social emotional um, struggles. And I will be really honest and tell you, not just for students, for staff, for families in general, Everyone has been through something during all this. And um, I know that just, just from talking to different students and knowing um, what was happening, I know that, for instance, probably 20% of our senior class this past year had, were themselves um, tested positive or were positive presumptive, um, just and in some cases, family members got sick, um, some very seriously. Um, we did have one parent pass away. 
Uh, we had um, myself and two other staff members had older parents get extraordinarily sick and some through some miracle, they did not pass away. Um, but I know all of you have all been through something, right? You didn't get through this. And even if, even if it wasn't a close person or family member who was sick, just the whole disruption to your lives makes, makes things kind of um, not the same. So that's something that, you know, um, we hope that you will share if you feel like, you know, there's, there's things we need to know that would help us um, with your son or daughter. And um, we had a team and we will continue to, we have a pretty huge team of people who work on social emotional um, care at Blackstone and following up with students. Um, on that. So, um, you know, please know that's like number one in the forefront of things. Um, I want you to see something cool, and this is an agreement that the um, students wrote up for all of us. And I'm hoping my link is going to work. It worked earlier. Come on, link. Oh boy. All right. All right. I guess it's not going to work. But it's cool and I'll share it on Facebook. Um, it did work previously, but um, basically the students put together a document. Um, one of the, our student leadership group, one of our student leadership groups called BAX 2.0 um, designed a draft of what they thought we should all agree on, whether we're a parent, whether we're a student, whether we're a staff member um, to make things go well. And I think it's, I've talked about probably most of the things on that agreement, um, but um, I think it's all things that you'll think are reasonable, but it's, um, but it's really nice because this was something that the students came up with and thought about, um, which is pretty cool. And that you know seems to help make things work better when they're student driven. Um, we also, um, Something you should know, there were a lot of procedures that um, we were asked to put into place and we are continuing to work on in terms of how we're keeping the building safe or people safe when they come into the building. Um, one of the things we're gonna ask is that before students leave home, that you make sure if you're home or you have a way that, that students will um, kind of go through the standard screening questions, how they're feeling, um, that day, I think you've probably all seen what some of those self-screening questions are. Um, and that nobody who's not feeling good at all comes in. And one of the reasons why that's important is that we know that the symptoms for COVID-19 can be many things. And particularly for adolescents, um, everything from Maybe, you know, sometimes they might be presenting with a headache and a stomach ache and never get sicker than that, but um, that, that may indicate that they, um, which, you know, that's, it's crazy that we have to think like that, but, but that might indicate that um, they are carrying COVID-19. Um, so we're, we're just going to ask that people, because we've set it up in such a way that, um, they can learn from home um, and stay on pace um, with us. We're asking that you don't send students in. Really, you err on the side of caution. Um, and you'll have ways to contact us to ask us more questions about that. Um, also, we're gonna ask that students are, you know, paying attention to all the procedures we have to have. When the students like get off the bus or they're coming in the building, again, they're, they'll quickly just be asked, you know, you feeling okay today? We will not be doing temperature checks for a couple of reasons, but one is that, um, A, they're not the most effective way to find out if somebody is, um, you know, is positive. Um, if you're doing them outside, they can read incorrectly. Um, so we'd rather just, ask, just ask a quick, a quick question, question to people. To and um, um, before they come, before in, they come in. in, when students come to um, their, um, 
when, when students come to their meeting, uh, sorry, when they come to the building, they will be going first to their advisory and that's where they'll just be asked to run through the screening and report in if there's anything that we need to know about um, in terms of how they're feeling. So we're trying to keep that pretty simple. Um, and boy, there's an awful lot in the plan. And also um, the plan had a bunch of assurances and checklists that we did not have to, um, that, that we didn't have to complete and um, on, you know, when we sent it to ride, but that we've been working on and we have a lot of information on and we still have more to do on. So um, no, if you don't see it in the plan, does in writing, it doesn't mean we haven't, you know, we have to do all the things that are asked of us in the plan. Um, I am going to try to get back to my regular screen and uh, so that I can um, be able to see things and, and whatnot. So just give me one second to do that. Close that one. Oops. Oh. And then um, just give me a second while I'm doing that. And then I will be back with you. Yay, we're back. And we're face to face. Yay. Okay. Um, also at the very bottom of the screen, there was a note just reminding the ninth grade or new, new parents um, that on Thursday, there's going to be an orientation that we've sent a lot of information about. Um, if there's time later, we can talk about that if there's people who want to. Um, but I guess at this point, I'm gonna say one thing and then I'm gonna ask you guys to chime in. Um, and I haven't been looking at the chat, so if hopefully there's not anything um, big. And I see that Brianna also, um, put a link to the document um, that didn't link. Oh, and also, Cheryl, thank you for that question about SATs, um, particularly to the 12th grade parents, because that's the group that we are also, you know, we're concerned about everybody, but there's some really big changes. We are going to be having a meeting in, in the next 10 days, where we are going to be talking a lot about everything that um, the 11th grade rising seniors need to know. Um, again, that's something we've been monitoring. It's rapidly changing. So um, as it is now, we plan to have the SATs in person here at Blackstone, as does every high school in the country, um, on, uh, it's like the third Wednesday of October. Um, there are, uh, but I will say that this is a year that there are very few colleges that are actually requiring the SAT. So we'll all be taking it, but everyone also knows that there's a chance that um, depending on where you live around the country, um, you're not able to do that or you can only do it once. So most colleges, if they are taking the S, you know, if they, they expect you to give your scores this year, um, they, um, they, they are not using that as a major measure um, in their admissions process. And that includes all the Ivy League colleges as well. So, um, but we'll get into that more with our, uh, our rising senior meeting, uh, family meeting. Uh, so um, what I will say is that other than if we're out on distance exclusively or practically exclusively, what I think you can predict is that there's going to be days and weeks where we're going to have disruption. I wish I could say that there weren't, but I just don't know how to, um, I, 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 we're not in control of that. So, um, so I, I wanna be honest and say that yeah, Trish just said the date is October 
14th, that's right. Um, so I am going to invite you, um, I'm going to, uh, you can now take yourself off of mute um, and ask a question. You can also maybe raise your hand, although I don't know if you've all got that option, um, but I would like to hear from all of you as to what you're thinking, feeling, and what you want to know. And I do see a question in the chat that says, when do classes start for each of the reopening plants? Ah, I knew I'd forget to have the calendar in front of me, but um, the date for all schools this year, theoretically, to reopen is August 31st. Can you speak up? Okay, I thank you. I'm I'm I thought I was yelling, so I'll yell actually. Is everyone having a hard time hearing me? I'm usually no, pretty loud. Okay, so no. I'm good. Okay, thanks. Um, but I'll yeah, okay. Um so what I will tell you is that um we will have the calendar to you and um the pl plan for August 31st, but I believe that also might be a day where we're starting with um, new students only, as we usually do. So um, I will, I'll get you all the details. If there's a staff member on the line who happens to have the calendar in front of them, you can also pipe in on that one. Um, I also feel like it's going to depend, I think, but I think everyone will be doing something that first week in September. So that, that, just be ready for, you know, what it is, I, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Other questions or comments or concerns or things you're worried about or you're thinking about? Hey, Hello. Carolyn. My name is Felicia. Hi. Okay, um, I saw um, Sonia. Sonia um, had her hand up, but I also think I hear Felicia. Kind of Sonia can go first. Sonia okay, go thanks, first. Sonia. Go ahead. So, since we're pulling from three communities, how do you, which positivity rate are you looking at? And <laughs> that together, so like it's so much harder for you, I imagine, than other. No, we actually. So, I guess, Sonia, that's a perfect question because um, this is a um, something where so far the governor and the commissioner have indicated to us, it's almost like they're saying, oh, we're gonna tell you, okay? Um, but I will tell you that our plan is to look at the fact if we've got any one of those communities mm -hmm. that has an unacceptably high risk and we need a little more knowledge as to what that, that number is or what it looks like, um, we, will, we will not be putting anybody in harm's way because no, everyone inside. in this region is inside. so interconnected and um, we and we know and from what I understand um, you know Sonia I think you probably know Dr. Michael Fine um, but he's somebody who is now at the um, Blackstone Valley Health Center he used to be the head of the State Department of Health and he has more recently also been the health advisor to um, the mayors of Pawtucket and Central Falls, and our schools have been using him in that manner. Um, he was recently quoted by the Boston Globe in saying that the positivity rates in Pawtucket and Central Falls right now are ranging between 13 and 17 percent. He would, I think, not like to see anybody in any really significantly large groups, um, you know, with, with it being at that number, I think people would like to see it under 5%. Um, I, we've been really, uh, Kyleen and I were actually both on a call with the governor and the commissioner a week ago today with the other charter schools. And we asked a lot of tough questions and Again, we didn't necessarily get the answers that 
I, in fact, my first question was, what would you like me to tell my families, <laughs> um, you know, if you're not telling me, like, what you're going to use for criteria as to whether we're in or out or on this plan or that plan? So, and I, again, I think um, the governor was actually really great on that call and I think sincerely interested in our concerns, but I... Um, I think a lot of us are continuing to put those kind of questions because we feel like we, we just need more um, before we can feel like, you know, uh, being here with certain numbers um, is going to be a reasonable risk, right? I think something that Dr. Fine told us that um, I think about a lot is that you know, there's safety, there's no 100% safe right now, right? There's no guarantees of 100% safe there, but there is some, some ways that we can try to set up situations that are as safe as possible. And we do need to live our lives. We do need to, if possible, get some students having some time with their teachers. I actually think if we had been able to be in class, um, if we had been able to see students for some amount of time during March to June, see small groups here or there, it would have you know, been way better. I think it was very, very hard to never see students and for students to never see us in person. So, um, you know, that's, that's exactly the kind of thing that, um, that we're gonna be working on with them. You know, um, I am going to try to go through some of the questions in the chat for a second. Um, and because I see, okay, Brianna confirmed we have student new student orientation September 1st, first day for all students September 2nd. That's our calendar. Um, so, um, okay, if somebody, somebody said, if we decide to do distance learning for, our, you know, completely for our students, um, our student, how would we figure out Zoom codes, all that. Well, we use, as you know, Google Classroom. All our students will have a Chromebook and will have whatever they need so that they can tune in. And we will give you very clear directions on how to get that stuff going. Um, we can make that a very one-on-one -on -one and personalized experience. Um, I know that our, our existing students, for our, our students who are returning, most of them know how to do the basics. If we find out that you're having tech issues, we will have a team ready to like help resolve all of those things. Um, so, um, so that's something that we'll be able to get for you, and um, and we'll be get. We'll, that's our job to handle. Um, and then, when should I notify the school? Okay. So if you're feeling like um, for whatever sets of reasons, you know that we may have a date that we give you like, hey, it would be really helpful if by August 15th you're thinking about this, that we know. We're probably going to set a date. That doesn't mean that you can't decide later. You can. But it would be real. You know, it's obviously if there's people who feel like that just makes sense. The sooner we could know that, the better. Um, and we, um, what I think we're going to do is send something out. Um, we talked, uh, Kylene and I spoke the other day about having a form that goes out that you can fill out online and just, here's what I'm thinking. Um, but obviously you could email Kylene or I too. Um, we just want to, we're going to want to do it in an organized way. Um, so that, you know, we know, um, and then it also said, um, when should I notify the, okay, um, that they'll remain with, the, okay. Um, will students have to social distance while in the classroom? Good question again. So something that I got to do for my special part of the plan was to figure out uh, how many students we could safely fit in every single room that we have. Luckily, we have a floor plan of the school that gives you a square footage and things. Um, we also came in and set up, even just to do some sample rooms, we set them up to like, you know, say, hey, does this make sense? 
Something that's very weird for us, but very necessary is that students are gonna be expected to sit in six feet apart from the center of the desk, you know, and we're gonna have the desks and rows set up in each room um, ahead of time. And we're not gonna be able to move them around, right? At Blackstone, we do a lot of teaching in big circles or in different interesting groupy ways. We're gonna be pretty limited in some cases as to how we can do that, which really stinks because it, it takes a lot from the experience. So one of the things I wanna also tell all of you as family members to know is that your, your kids need to know that when they come back, if they're coming back to Blackstone, it's gonna be different than the regular old Blackstone, right? It, and for some amount of time, we're gonna do everything we can to reduce those differences, but because of just a simple thing like that, of not being able to change your classes um, in a regular way. When we can, we're going, to, and, and we mainly can for the ninth and 10th graders, the teachers are going to travel more to the students than them travel out to them. That will limit um, the travel in the hallways. We did some math, Paul Pasaba did some math with the computer. I did some math with just regular old figuring it out and Kyleen while she was working on the schedule. And um, we are gonna make sure there's no more than 30 students on any floor traveling at a time with lots of monitoring. Um, for we're gonna have to do a lot of breaks in classes because let's face it, these are teenagers. I can't sit for two hours straight and not move, right? So I don't know how we can expect that that's gonna go real well by asking teenagers to do that and not be able, you know, um, we're going to need to do lunch initially in their advisory space, rooms. Um, their advisories are all going to be in classrooms so if they're currently, they meet in a cozy little office, they're not gonna be doing that. They're gonna be in a designated classroom um, for that, um, for those. Um, the teachers even have to deal with the fact that they might not be teaching in their regular room. They're gonna have to be flexible um, because it just might, the way we're gonna have to move kids. Um, we will have some times when students are moving, we're gonna to have to have like three passing times. It's going to be complicated. Um, but will that part we can keep organized and we can do a lot in advance to control. Um, we also, I wanna let you know that we were fortunate, we're, we're getting um, a good amount of federal money um, that all public schools are eligible for, especially if they have a high percentage of students who receive free or reduced lunch. Um, so some of that money will be going towards the things that we need to make things run smoothly or the planning time that we need or bringing in somebody from the outside to help us with some of that. Um, something Paul Pasaba and I met today and something we're going to be doing is making sure that no matter what classroom you walk in, and this will help us when we're not dealing with COVID, right? No matter what room you go in, a teacher could find the projector and have all the right things they need to plug in and they can teach equally well in that room as their own room. Um, um, so that that goes, you know, it's something that the teacher can focus on teaching and not have to worry about tech and, and whatnot. Um, so that's something we'll be doing. So yeah, there'll be lots of social distancing. Um, I'm gonna talk about orientation a little later. Um, because that's gonna be happening Thursday. And no, I'm gonna say quickly for the people who are new parents on the line that um, if you have not received an updated invitation tonight, you will be within 24 hours. Um, parents are not expected to stay. They can um, drop their students off and it's going to be one group of advisors are coming in the morning um, and another later. Crystal, are you on the line and can you just tell me the exact times, tell our folks the exact times for that? Sure, hi everybody. Um, so I wrote in the chat, I can also stay a little bit later for anyone who wants to hang out so that this message is just specifically for uh, students who are coming in. But our sessions are going to be 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then again from 12 to 2 p.m. So just a short amount of time 
um, and I can go over more details later. Okay. Um, oh, disinfected before transitioning. Yeah. Um, so, oh yeah. So obviously when, when students are in, are eating their lunch, they can't wear their mask. Um, and uh, here's what's happening. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to have two people, one person on every floor who is going to be responsible for helping with the disinfecting and cleaning and all that um, during all the transition times, but all throughout the day. We also, um, tomorrow, we're getting a bunch of portable sinks. So we'll like, we're going to have it I'll probably end up buying more. I just want to see them first, but um, there's six arriving and people will be able to wash their hands like throughout the building in a way that they're not now. Um, we are going to be in very large rooms with very small numbers of people eating without their masks on. It's really the only way that we can figure doing it. Um, and... Oh, yeah. Um, and the folks who are advising us from the health end feel that that's a pretty safe way to do it. Um, we're also, but there's going to be a lot of protocols um, as to how those things are going to have to happen. Um, and, but yeah, they'll have to take their mask on and put a new, you know, put their old or new one on before they go um, to class. Um, will student and classes be split um, up? part uh so we're going uh we are only using the classrooms one of the reasons that we can only have half the students here at a time maximum is because we have classrooms that you can't put 22 kids in um in on any day or 20 kids in um and, and keep social distance so those classrooms will only be used for um uh for advisory or smaller classes they won't be used at all for classes that are bigger um and <laughs> i i got a, a message that i know was sent privately but i i, I want to say that um i want to clarify something the commissioner um commissioner infante green um, wants everybody to go back in to in-person learning, but we, they actually have given us the right to allow students the flexibility to live at home, at least on the high school level. So when she presents in public, she's not going to give you those nuances, um, but um, what she won't allow is like, well, she does not want to allow is for schools to um um be able to just choose that you're not going to go back um however um i i will say and i will say she also knows that and again you folks can chime in on this but there's a big difference in the needs of some of our parents related to child care in school um versus if your kids are in elementary school and so I know a lot of you are not crazy about kids not being home if you have to go to work. Um, but we know that there, you would be expecting them to be more responsible at this age. So um, it's, there are different decisions that they're trying to, I know one of my parents is going, yeah, but. So that's why also, if you have your son or daughter or somebody who you're just like, that so can't happen, then those are the conversations we want to have with you privately, right? About what can we do to accommodate some situations that really might require something different. Um, and yeah, you're going to know the second we know <laughs> the, the, what, what feels like the most reasonable choice and what they're telling us it is. Um, and, oh, good question. I don't, I don't know if Cindy's on the line or Stacy or, um, but Kyleen, Stacy and Kyleen are the scheduling committee. So um, they are already working on student schedules. And I think that 
Um, and so I am not positive when they will get their schedules for the year, but if you're concerned that they're getting into a certain class or not, and you need to know that information sooner than later for a particular reason, feel free to email. If you're a parent who already knows your advisor, you can also um, email them. Um, so that's another, another one. Ah, transportation um, for in-person. So as of right now, um, as of right now, the, uh, all of you know that the only district that we have buses for is Central Falls, and we're going to continue to have buses. Um, we still only have two of them. We also know that not all of our students take the bus that live in Central Falls. So um, we, when we figured out the plan, the bus companies and us, I mean, the only um, way that we know we can keep kids safe is to have 24 or 25 students on a bus. <laughs> and if they're siblings, then we can put them sit, sitting together. Other than that, so, um, we're going to have staggered bus schedules. Um, I don't know the times yet, but they're probably not going to be that different than they were last year. But for the Central Falls parents, um, as soon as we know them, we will communicate them to you. And I think the same bus stops that we had in the past as well. Um, but, you know, the problem, one of the big problems in getting everybody back to any kind of in-person is that um, nobody had time to manufacture any more buses, right? So even if we wanted to pay all kinds of money to bus companies to give us some more buses, it's just not going to happen. So um, that really, that, that drove, I think, for most communities, that was the start of the plan. I know Kylie was on the phone, ah, what can you do for a student? And the answer was, you've got two buses. <laughs> we can maybe mess with the times a little but that's all you've got. Um, and and I, I wanna let you know that um, we are in daily, weekly contact with um, the other members of the Rhode Island League of Charter Schools, as well as um, the, uh, many of the districts that we serve. And they're supposed to also be with um, the uh, regular public school district leaders and us, um, the charter leaders that serve those districts so that we can talk as a group because they, of course, I mean, I, I only can tell you, I've only talked to one directly who's in, but you know, they're very concerned about how they're going to be able to pull this off, you know, safely. And they're very concerned about the, just the safety question. Um, so uh, again, Carrie's asking me a really great question. Who has the final say in the plans? Um, I, I t we talked to the, we asked the governor and the commissioner about that because I think that, um, I think that we were confused about that as well. And um, I'm still a little bit confused about that. Um, I think that, um, I think, first of all, hopefully tomorrow, we're gonna get the promised feedback on our plan from RIDE. The second thing that we have to figure out is even if they say you can go on your 50% in-person plan, something that I need to know is that um, our faculty and staff is all in a place where that's gonna be able to be possible. I know a lot of school departments are struggling with the fact that they might have um, faculty and staff members who um, either themselves have a medical condition or somebody in their family does that makes it so that they, you know, they're gonna have a hard time being able to be in the building. Um, my biggest fear is that we start on a 50% plan and then within a day or two, a whole one person either has symptoms or somebody in their family tests positive, and we have to send a whole group of students and teachers out on distance learning right away. 
and then three days later it happens to another team, we're trying to avoid that kind of situation. I don't know how well we'll be able to. Um, I will say that, um, that, that we're going to consult all of you before we just announce it, um, assuming that the governor doesn't say, hey, you really can't go in. And then for safety reasons, right? There might be some real major league reason. Um, that that we can't do it um and i see maria has her quest her hand up i am just wondering why don't you send like a uh, three question survey to the families about transportation because maybe many of us that send the children to the school by bus we can bring them to the school so you don't you don't have to be like staggering the buses yeah. So we commit at least for a while what this, like we fix, we don't fix the situation, but yeah. at, least at the beginning. We are going to do that. And because we know that we have, um, we know that we have um, kids who drive themselves some years, right? We don't know who got their license over the summer and has a car, right? All that too. So, um, so we will be doing that so that we can see what the numbers are going to look like on the bus. Um, but, you know, we sort of took what our normal looks like when we, I don't think it's gonna get us to a place where we could, um, I don't think it's gonna change a lot about, cause we can still only put 24 on the bus. So I will see how much of a difference that makes. Um, and, but we are gonna be doing that too. And, I, and we are gonna be wanting to know how are kids getting here? Um, and for all kinds of reasons, right? Um, Anna? Yes, I have a question about the um, mask wearing where earlier in the month I was hearing that um, it was going to be a mandatory thing. But today, earlier, I heard you say that they are saying it's optional, but that the school feels it's best for everybody to wear their masks. So when you talk about like breaks and having a student on with a mask from the time they, you know, enter the building, mm -hmm. what, what are you talking about with breaks that they yeah, can take Yeah, that's a their great question. Off? I'd like to talk more about that because, again, I was, you know, I was the one writing the part of that and having to do a lot of thinking and talking to people about it. Um, and we're still talking about it, right? So. Um, uh, I think the expectation is from our end is going to be that you're wearing your mask most of the time. Um, we have not done a protocol, with, meaning a, here's how everyone, every teacher is going to handle it when a kid removes their mask, okay? Mm -hmm. That's something we have to have. Um, but we also want to tell kids in advance what might be okay. For instance, although, you know, I'm not going to say that here's, here's my advice, but I know that if a kid goes like this for just a minute to give themselves some relief and put it back, nobody's going to get COVID that way, right? That's not going to be, you know, that's not putting you at huge risk because they did that for one second and it gave them some relief. Um, but those are the kind of things that we want to, we have students who are available this summer to help us figuring some of this out. And, and what we really wanna do is have some students make videos where they're gonna to talk to the students before they even come in the door about what that's gonna be like. Because we have older students who are working in jobs all day where they're wearing them. And so mm -hmm. they've already gotten used to tolerating them for the most part, right? And, um, but I also think it might mean that teachers might say, hey, we're gonna slowly, or we're gonna, as you need it, um, walk outside and people can take their mask, you know, we're gonna get distant and people can take their mask off for a while, right? Um, it also might mean that um, students might need to be excused liberally from class so they can walk out and take their mask off for a little bit. Um, it's being reasonable um, and, and knowing that even as adults, it's really hard to keep that thing on constantly, especially while you're talking and you're sitting for a long time. 
Um, so what can, about like, you know, I'm concerned about the CO2 levels. Like if a, it's a person and I know, I know what you're saying, you know, you would go into jobs, people are saying you have to wear your mask. I mean, pe most people are not even wearing their masks properly because they just can't breathe. I just don't see a student in school all day with a mask on while they're learning, concentrating, focusing, mm -hmm. trying to talk, answer a teacher, listen to a teacher with this mask on. I mean, do you guys, are you going to have some type of testing to where you can test CO2 levels? Like well, where the what, building is yeah. supposed to be? Do you know what I'm saying? Because like yeah, if you look so at OSHA, if you look at OSHA and they go into buildings, I mean, it's, a, right. it's an agency that they go into sure. buildings yeah. and they test yep. CO, CO2 levels to make sure that everyone's in a safe environment. Yeah. It should be at a certain percentage. Like, are we doing that for the school and the school building where these students are going to be in their classrooms with masks all day? Because when you say, hey, you need to go outside and just breathe that. a little bit, sure, they're going to come back in and they got to put their mask on again for another, what, two, three hours again while they're focusing, right. learning and concentrating. Well, I just that's a big that's a big area that I didn't talk about. That's pretty important. And I'm glad you brought it up. Um, something I didn't talk about is um, our our heating and cooling and our ventilation system at Blackstone and what it's like. Um, because that's something that I've had to spend way more time than I want to getting to know over the years. And also I've been spending a lot of time reading anything I can get my hands on and talking to the people who service our system and engineers who do work on them. Um, so um, we're lucky that we have air conditioning at Blackstone and we have a, a heating and cooling system. One of the things that will be in place is we're getting an adapter on our system so that the air moves quite quickly out in and out of the rooms. So no matter what's being expelled, it's leaving a lot faster than it is currently. Can I give you the science on that? No, I cannot. Um, but I have the people who know the most about that working on that. Um, I think that if we were at a point where we had to test CO2 levels, we shouldn't be in the building. And I think, um, so we're, we're talking to doctors, we're talking to scientists, and we're talking to engineers who that's their area of expertise. And that's who's got to advise us on that. Um, they gave the schools actually some pretty good guidance on a lot of that stuff um, that they, again, that the state was gathering. And um, there's plenty that's been written about those things. If there's a parent that has any expertise in those areas, I'd love to talk to you because. Um, have you guys um, had anybody present you? I know you have doctor scientists presenting you with, you know, the information that says that the masks are safe. Have you had anybody present you like credible doctors and scientists also that have shown that masks can be harmful to wear? after um, a certain amount of time. There's not anybody who um, has presented that I know about. If there's somebody who, who somebody knows that um, uh, we've talked to and we've, we're getting information and the state is getting information from the medical community, we have to follow um, and trust to some extent what the State Department of Health and the medical professionals, that's their job. That is their job and right also their job in the beginning they were all saying that we shouldn't be wearing masks and now they're all saying we should yeah. wear masks so and it's I been guess, such a back and forth yes. thing yeah so i guess so. anna what i'm just going to say is that i know there's been some disagreement about it um i know that people as they were learning about what COVID did and how it acted things changed once they learned certain things um uh, what I have to do is we've got to go with what we're being told um, and make a decision. And the decision we're making is that kids are going to wear them. And I'm fine if kids can't tolerate them and are, or their parents feel they have other, there's other information and they'd rather they not. And I'm fine with kids. It's not a bad thing for any kid to learn from home. Nobody's going to be thought of as less or given less attention because when the kids that are here are here, they're going to be in the same classroom with those kids. They're going to see their teacher teaching. They're going to be able to talk to their teacher as much as a kid who's in the classroom. So I feel like it, it's, this is an imperfect thing for everyone, right? Um, there, and there's going to be continual, you know, disagreement, controversy, 
conflicting information. There's something new that comes out every week. So we just have to go with what our, you know, our best information that we feel we're getting um, from. Um, are you open? Are you open to receiving um, other information from parents that they've looked into in the in masks being harmful or? Is that something you guys would take the time to look at? Um, um, I, will always look at I will look at anything, but I would also want to be able to find for our safety because, because the um, folks that I know that, that are weighing in from all the major medical schools, for instance, um, in, in the country and locally, um, I know that that's not, so I'll read anything is the answer. And I guess we're then gonna just have to see if there's something that um, people feel is um, over, you know, is something that we need to look at harder. And are um, you guys providing the surgical masks or are we bringing, they bring oh, in their own masks? Are, we are providing, the masks we're providing are pretty basic. They're not N95s, they're paper masks. We also probably are going to get some cloth masks that you can um, but they have to be washed, of course. Um, but we will have tons of masks that are um, very breathable because they're, I, for me anyhow, I, I prefer to have a paper one on. I feel like I can breathe a lot longer and easier with it. Um, so that- When you say the paper ones, are you talking about the blue ones, the surgical masks? Um, Can you say I'm paper? Far away, but I think, but yes. I mean, yes, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. It looks like a surgical mask. Okay, because I was a little concerned so on you, those because those say that um, they, on, on the manufacturing box, I've seen that those have said that they don't protect against COVID-19. Okay, so, so I they, guess I want to, yeah, I want to uh, clarify that they aren't there. I'm going to, and then we're not going to, I'm going to move on if people have other questions, but um, I just want to say that the masks actually are not to protect you from COVID. They're protect, if you are an unknown carrier of COVID, it's protecting others. That's what the masks are for, um, are, that's the purpose of them. And they may also help with you getting particles of air um, that may have COVID, but that's, that's mainly what they're for. Um, I think I've got somebody else asking a question. Um, Ola. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, you really tried, uh, Ola Bangi, that's my name. Thank you so much, and I would want to ask I want to like to thank the last uh, speaker, but uh, one thing we should all be uh, set in office, uh, we cannot solve all problems here, and we cannot also play with the lives of our children. But then uh, in um, science and in the medical field, uh, we always go with uh, uh, evidence-based. Whatever it is that um, science has, has proven to be right, or to be uh, as at uh, the moment, to be the best thing to do, uh, is what we go by. It doesn't mean tomorrow things cannot change. But as it is now, the wearing of masks has been proven to uh, at least uh, to some level, um, helping uh, 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 spreading our things that can actually cause it. But then that's actually not why I, I, I actually want to say something. I want to ask what the school is doing concerning our contact uh, tracing, because oh. mm -hmm. we are not robots. And these kids too are not robots. They go from school, they go home and the rest like that. They meet people, they may have these, uh, one, of, one or two of them can contract this without even showing symptoms. They may right. be asymptomatic. When they get to, when we get to know about this, we also want to protect our society to be able to say, okay, fine, who and who have uh, probably uh, been exposed to probably this kid so that we know how to curtail that so that it doesn't go out of hand. That is one. Two, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, while in school, what is the school doing concerning the movement of these kids? The stage in which they are, we cannot, we can do little or nothing as to probably asking them not to move. But then is the school considering anything like uh, probably staggering movements in the school? Why they are in the school? They need to move from one place to the other, from mm -hmm. one classroom maybe to the other and stuff like that. Is the school putting anything in place to be able to say, okay, fine, okay, this set of kids will move uh, probably within this time and stuff like that, so that it's going to reduce the number of people that are moving probably on the floor or stuff like that. And please, I would just want to uh, ask that the uh, 
resolution or the submission of this meeting should be uh, sent to parents, maybe in a brief way, just send it to parents. Some of us have actually joined this very late and some people too probably may not, uh, probably uh, might not have joined now so that they get to see what was discussed and what and what we actually resolved about some things. I think that would be very great. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. That was all very, very helpful. And let me go through them in order. So um, I talked a little bit about contract uh, tracing, contact tracing earlier, um, but let me tell you sort of some of how it would work. Um, we have, and you'll see it in the plan, which I'm gonna put up as soon as we end this meeting, but um, the basic idea is there's going to be a team of us that when we find out that there is anybody who we should have concern because they either have a symptom, somebody they've tested positive, somebody in their family has, whether they're staff or student, we will be meeting within an hour and maybe much faster if we're in school at the moment. Um, but, um, and then part of what we need to do is, right, we need, to, we need to make decisions quickly. One of the things we will also be doing is the depart there'll be a team at the Department of Health that if there's any controversy about what we should do at that moment, we can pick up the phone and get somebody to help us making the decision. Um, once we know, for instance, that we have somebody in a situation that we should be worried about, um, the first thing we're going to do is like, let's just say it was a, uh, a student who's in a particular team. We have two different teams on the ninth grade. Those students are primarily taught by the same teachers. At least all their major classes are the same teachers, same group of core teachers. We also have a ninth grade dean, John Horton. Um, and so we would, we would get together, we would easily through this application that we've got in our student information system, be able to say, okay, which, who are the group of students? Um, because it may be likely that we immediately have to notify you that, that your child is on quarantine for some amount of time. We're not gonna be able to tell you which student it is or which, you know, we have to maintain everybody's confidentiality but we're going to tell you if we think there's any reason to believe and it's also going to come down to researching the there's going to be things there's probably going to be assigned seats on the bus there's going to be um things in place so that what 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 we can't control and what we're going to need to do education with the students on is their own contact tracing because when they're not with us who are they with and where are they and so I think that's something for all the families to think about now is I know the governor did a good job early on talking to people about keeping a little diary of where you've been. There's now the, the app that you can get for your phone that will do it for you. At least it will tell you the addresses you've been to. Um, but there's lots of things we can do to work with the students ourselves because I think that's probably the, the most successful thing we can do is get the students to own that. And that is our goal, to get the students, not us, but the students to really be worrying about it and owning the... Uh, sorry, the let me quickly come in there. Thank you for raising that. Uh, owning it is actually the key now. Now, is the school trying to do anything like probably giving like um, a, an, uh, a prepared sheet to these kids? Every okay, week? way more than that. Just, yeah. <laughs> Way Just more. Like that. As, um, as so, easy as that. Can yeah, I touched, I touched on it earlier, but yeah. we have got several groups of kids who are either meeting together this summer, and we'll be, like, if your son or daughter wants to be part of any of this, they can let us know too. But we've got some teams who are meeting um, already from, you know, who are kids who have been doing a lot of leadership activities, and they're the ones who are working on a lot of that. And then we're going to be asking for some other kids to come on board to help us with that because the educate between getting kids to understand what it's going to be like when they come into the building and being able to get them comfortable um, and follow the kind of rules they have to, but kind of self um, uh, monitor themselves. It's just going to make everybody's life easier, right? We, it, it, it's, um, it's not going to be ideal, but that's true. Moving within the building, I spoke about briefly, we, we still have more work to do, 
But again, I mentioned earlier, we will never have more than 30 kids on a floor passing at a time. And there will be multiple, like we're using some of our federal funds to hire extra people so that there's never not somebody watching them do all those things and making sure. So that's, those are the kind of things that are taking lots of time. And those are the details that we needed to talk about when we put our plan together. Um, but we even have more to do because uh, I mean, in my, one of my meetings today, I, you know, like, I think we have, um, if anybody's in the, by the way, knows anybody who's um, deals with audio or amplification, we need more amplification throughout our building sound. Um, but um, we had a proposal last year, it was very expensive. But again, I might have to use some of the federal money for that because we're probably going to have to have when kids do need to pass we're going to have to have multiple passing times it's going to have to be announced it's not a bell thing um and i also want to say that we um we are recording both sessions and they'll be sent out through um debbie's alert system and they'll be put on our facebook page so that anybody who wasn't here tonight will be able to get all this information hey carolyn this hey. is Brittany. Hi. Is it Bernie? Um, yes. Hi. Hi. I've been senior on the call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So I have a question, and this is about like um Providence school kids. Okay. Um. So what are the transportation gonna be like for us? So do you ha do you guys like have any um okay so, on like what um, we're gonna do? Again, um, you, you know, as you know, most of our Providence students, we provide bus passes to and they take RIPTA. Um, something that, again, it's a, it's a concern all around that there is enough buses available to go during the busy times so that people are not jammed up on busing. Um, so I don't know the answer to how that's going to change or not change between now and then, but I can tell you that it's something that's being, we're working on and the state is working on because, um, you know, the entire, all the high school students in Providence, most of them, that's how they get to school. So um, that's a lot bigger group than ours. So, uh, I mean, it's really a big issue. And I'm happy about that because it's one that I don't have to be the first one to figure out. Right? Somebody else can can make a stab at it. Somebody also asked about um, uh, social media. If if parents don't have social media, how we're going to try to get this info? I mean, through email, through I mean, we'll get on the phone with people if we have to. People can reach out. We're here. We have. Uh, there's been somebody at school every day. Tends to be only nine to three. Um, we, you know, kindly, we're on our email um, and there'll be somebody available at Blackstone between now and when you're, when we open. So um, we will be getting it if we need to mail things, we'll mail things. If you're a family, if you know somebody, I mean, uh, Felicia's on the line, who's our, been doing a lot of our parent coordinator. I know she's on the call. Um, so I don't know, Felicia, if you want to say um, anything about how we're going to communicate with families or what we've been doing. And, um, and also Angelina um, asked about if there's 30 students on a floor, do, how, how can one grade be in the school at the time? Well, that's, we're going to be having staggered passing. So that's what I meant by they're going to have to like, and the way we're going to do it is this when students, for instance, need to pass, um, which isn't every period, because the teacher's gonna come to them, remember, as possible. We're gonna keep the kids in groups together as much as we can, the same group. But there's electives, there's um, advisory and lunch, there's things where they're gonna have to leave that stable group. And so uh, during those times, we're gonna have three different passing times, and um, that's how we're going to control the numbers. We have to have it all figured out before we open. That's like I have to. Um, and yes, the students will have full access to their teachers if they are on the days that they are in the same kind of way, you know, they can't just run into class, although they sometimes try to, to get a teacher's attention when they're teaching, right? But they'll be able to, you know, um, 
teachers are going to be looking and hoping that kids are in touch with them. Um, many of the teachers, we have several teachers, most of our teachers will be having to teach on all four days um, in these schedules. So um, Crystal's on the line. I know she'll be teaching all four days and hope that her kids aren't home at the same time, right? If we're out on distance. But um, we've got plenty of, of you know, teachers also managing that, but just in the same kind of ways that, that um, teachers are available. Um, the other thing is that I know Beth and Heather, at least uh, probably others, and Diego and many others from student support team are on the line. Um, these are staff members who might have an advisory, but they're not teaching. So we've got a whole group of those people that if a student needs to uh, need some help or needs something, you know, some question answered and they, um, they can't get them, get that teacher right there that day, there's always someone else who will help them or answer their questions. And um, it, it's going to take a bit for us to build this knowledge base up for the new students. But I think most of the students know, and they have those other people that they'll go to when they can't get their math teacher right that second. Um, you know, that's one of the beauties of having a smaller school and a very personalized environment that we want kids to not just, you know, yeah, to be able to quickly get answers from people. Um, somebody also was asking about if you, if somebody, if your child goes to school in our whatever in-person plan and then you feel like you want to pull back and have them stay home, that's okay. You will be able to switch um, th because there's going to be many reasons <laughs> that people might need to. So we need to be that flexible. Um, so sure. And yes, we will still be providing the bus passes um, for the students that we now do. Yeah, which is all the Providence students that need one. So um, anybody who hasn't asked a question, um, I see, I can't see who's asking. So somebody's just going to have to talk. Go. This is my, I'm sorry. Hi, this is Magnelli. Um, Hi, Magnelli. Uh, I'm just, hello. My son, uh, he's in ninth grade. He's going to start um, new now. And I'm just concerned because he has an IEP. Mm. And I just want to know, like, how is this going to work? Like, this wow. last, you know, days of school, it was he was struggling a lot. Right. So I am very, very concerned. Now, yeah, we are too. Um, so one of the things that you saw, I mean, first of all, students have individual education plans and 504 plans for all different kinds of reasons, right? And we have students who aren't on formal plans who also need, like this just doesn't work for very well for all mm -hmm. kinds of reasons. Um, but first and foremost, it's the law that we provide the students who have their IEPs with the accommodations that they need to succeed. And so that's, that's something that if we have not, we probably haven't met with you, but I will tell you that you will be hearing from uh, probably the special ed director herself, as well as um, the special ed teacher who's going to be their case manager, as well as their advisor. Okay. So they will be uber aware of what your the needs are um, and those are the students that when I say like, hey, that flexible Monday, that's also a reason why we're doing that. There might even be some kids that we have to figure something out for that we need here physically every day for individual reasons, right? Mm -hmm. That are very mm -hmm. particular to them. Mm -hmm. So okay. that, that's a very good and important question for everybody to hear. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Somebody else who has asked a question. I have a question. Casey, go ahead. But well, this is um, the mom. Um, I have a question also about the IP. Uh huh. Well, we've been having problems with the IP. Like this, I only had met twice with Glenda okay. for, the, for the IP, and what two years almost? Well, going to the third year. Uh, when she was in the distance learning last year, well, for the last uh, school year, I had a really tough time because they were not getting, they were not getting um, in contact with me at all. 
okay, in case so he had Casey, a lot of. Okay, um, this isn't Casey. This is her mom. But as Lisa, said, he's mom. Because mom. this is a this, I want to protect the confidentiality of your child and everyone's. I want to ask that you, um, that I contact you tomorrow to talk about, uh, you know, any specific issues, and if um. And if um, I'm going to assume we've got the correct phone number for you in Power School, and I'll also um, and, I, and you should have my email from Facebook. So if for any reason you don't hear from me, you will. I'll, I'll find you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Also, Christina, have all my contact information. Okay, great. I'll be in touch. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, college visits. Oh my God. What a great question. Diego's here. Um, Diego, you want to talk about what you've been finding out about college visits a little bit? Hey everyone. Uh, my name is Diego. I'm in charge of college access. I help out with a lot of other things, but college visits will probably look a little different, right? College campuses are, you know, some of them are closed. Some of them are open, you know, day by day, just like everything else in a COVID world. We're learning more and more. Um, I would love to get on campuses if it's safe. Um, and right now, you know, it's up in the air, but the colleges are doing a lot on their end to give students, prospective students, unique experiences. And I'm working on a lot of um, information to get out to you guys that will make this so much easier than it was this past fall, uh, this past spring. Um, yeah, I mean, so basically colleges, <laughs> Colleges aren't hosting this, it's other than online. So um, that's a whole other body of work that we have been delving into. And we are in, in you know, the good thing is we, we've been on lots of webinars and been very much in touch with what's happening in the higher education community. We're also still advising our seniors that just graduated and are going to college and hearing about all the things, I mean, um, that, that are happening and changing in that world. So, um, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have a lot to say about that. Anybody else who hasn't asked a question? Or a staff member that wants to say something, um, or somebody who's already asked a question, if not, that wants to. If not, I have question okay again. I have a question um if we do decide to keep them at home I think you said earlier I just want to make sure that while the teacher's teaching in the classroom with the students that are in class the students at home can log in at the same time that they're teaching so they don't have to do it on their own like That's they log exactly, in they can hear the yep. whole yep okay yep so they'll they'll be lot this it will be the student's responsibility to log in mm -hmm. um but it um so in fact, uh, I, I literally just met with, with Paul Pasaba about this today. Um, there were a couple of suggestions on, as to how we do it, but one, uh, one way I think we're probably gonna go is that there'll be a separate computer and monitor in every classroom for, just for that purpose. So the teacher can use their own comp computer or whatever for whatever they're doing, and there'll be one where they can see the students on you know, the whole time um, that are logging in from home. All right, and then if the students from home and they have a question, the teacher could see that they're raising their hands, that's they right. can ask the question and that's be involved right. in the class. Okay. That's the goal because that, you know, frankly, we just don't have enough teachers, right? Otherwise, you'd need a, right? We can't expect the teachers to, to do a completely separate curriculum for distance. Mm -hmm. If we were, you know, I know like Providence is going to have a separate academy, but um, it, I think what they're going to try to do is get a certain number of parents so that it, they can take the teachers to support that and do it separate. Um, we think because our teachers are flexible and they, you know, um, they want the kids there with them as much as humanly possible, um, they would rather, mm -hmm. I don't know, Crystal or any other teachers you want to talk about that, what your, vi what your vision is, if you have one yet. <laughs> I can I'm see really you, Crystal. Really there might be other people uh, I could put on the spot, but I can see you. Yeah, I'm not sure what other teachers are here, but I see some uh, parents and students I've talked before. So, Nick, 
see you all again. Uh, yeah, certainly there's a lot of things that we still need to to work out. But as Carolyn said, we're pretty flexible. Can you hear me okay? Not really. Okay. I'm not sure if you heard me. Um, yeah, you were a little sketchy there, Crystal, but um, I'll just type it in the chat. Yeah, you can type it in the chat and then I could read a little more about what you were saying. Um, and I also see, let's see, okay. I'm getting, these are kind, kind of going, coming in a little quicker. So I'm just trying to look through to see if I'm not missing things. Um, Anna, do you, in the meantime, do you want to ask your question? Oh, I, that, that was my question. I already asked. I already oh, asked okay. You. Thank you. And yeah. um, who else? Or people? Sonia? I yeah, see your hand. Go. Um, so given what you said about uh, the uncertainty of August 17th that was supposed to be, but it's not anymore, maybe earlier or later, how, what is your plan to communicate what you just said to us directly to the students? When, how, um, could you give, like, will we be included in that same? Is it a separate message directly to them? How are you envisioning communicating with the students? Um, well, right, that's a great question. Um, and I think, um, I, don't, I don't know that, because I spent most of the last few weeks writing this plan um, and submitting it, um, and I don't know if I'm gonna um, do a great job uh, telling you all the different ways, but I'll tell you what what we've been thinking about so far. Um, one is that, again, we have some student leaders that have been working on certain pieces of it um, so that they can communicate. But the, what are we, so I think there's some certain layers, right? There's different layers. Um, so what might go out, what I'd like to do is within the next week, get something out, just an email. And I've been sending, we've been st sending emails to students this summer. I don't know how many of them are tuned into that. So that's something also I'll ask families. Can you make sure your kids are checking their email? Because we've been sending out, you know, not like we do in the school year, but we've been sending them a lot of resources and they don't tend to reply back. <laughs> so they might be reading it or we'll find out later they read it, but um, please, um, they, can, they can email their advisors and um, many of us anytime um, and we'll do our best, but what we will do is we will be doing multiple things. We'll be having some chats like this where we can have forums with students, where it's just mainly, you know, focused on students and their kind of questions or needs. Um, we'll be setting up some of those. We're going to have, as I said, a special meeting just for the rising seniors and their needs. Um, on Thursday, there's going to be some orientation and it's just a part one, really, an introductory um, orientation for the um, incoming new students. And then I think already there's advisors who are reaching out to their students about things and talking to them. We also have some of the different youth leadership groups. So um, if you have a suggestion or a way that you think we should be reaching out, or if we send an email, CC the parents list, if we send it to all students, we can do that as well. Um, it's, we have it set up in our email system so we can just send it to students at Blackstone Academy um, once they have an email. But um, if we need to do something where we also do the system where every parent gets it, like here's something we sent to all students, we can work on that as well. You know, and I know Bernice and maybe some other students are on the line. So if you guys have any thoughts about that, speak now or send us a message about that, about ways you'd like us to communicate or how often. Um, I know Diego's saying in the chat that he's very, he's like all he's been doing, a lot of what he's been doing is, is doing research for us about the changing climate and all the things we're going to need to know for the 12th graders. Um, as they, it's going to be an extremely different year. And Trish is on the line, who's our, our part-time, very experienced guidance counselor. And um, she and Diego and I have been meeting about um, those students' needs, I mean, continually, and really trying to 
stay on top of how that's how things are going to change. Um, Carolyn, so, if you wanted me to chime in really quick, um, I did mention in the chat, if you didn't get to see it, that I am available for any conversations around 12th grade college access. Um, after school, I just seen Rachel's question. Um, you know, you want to get together after this or one on one, we can schedule a time going forward. Um, and there'll be more formal communication, you know, as the days and weeks go forward. And we'll have more guidance, especially when it comes to after school. Um, you know, we're trying to worry about the, you know, 8 to 245 schedule first. Um, but, you know, I can envision a world where we do have some in-person after school. Again, we're going to have to be very mindful of rules and regulations um, as they come our direction. But in terms of the college access piece, again, I'm more than happy to sit with you guys, um, get with parents as well. I love to talk to parents about this stuff, get an early um, chance at conversations to help guide your students through this very challenging process, even now more so with COVID. Um, but we're, once we nail down our junior college night, um, so we're calling it still, it got canceled last spring. Um, that will be happening. I think Carolyn mentioned we're going to make the decision in the next couple of weeks to get some different times available for well, the rising. Well, the next couple of days we'll have a date, but it won't. Yes, won't yes, yes. For, yeah. <laughs> um, but get you guys all of that relevant information and really just get a head start because, again, like I mentioned, it is a different animal that we're tackling, tackling this spring, uh, this fall, when it comes to college applications and what the schools are going to require. There, there is um, some opportunities for us to take advantage of, you know, this difficult situation we're going through. So we'll get very strategic um, and work with you guys individually as we go forward. Um, you know, I also have, um, I, um, I also, somebody asked also about protocols for keeping up with school sanitation. Uh, we're, you know, we got a lot of good advice and uh, guidance on that from RIDE, from where they got it from outside sources. Um, so, I mean, what, I can't go into every piece of what that's going to look like, but um, we have a team that that's all they're working on is, you know, we've been ordering all kinds of supplies and tracking down things that are hard to get. And we are, we will have people in place who that's all they have to do is sanitize areas. And their main job will be making sure that things are, are clean. I mean, uh, we also, I will say, everybody works here. Nobody's afraid, nobody was afraid to clean before <laughs> or like, you know, um, do a lot of that stuff in between in the classrooms when they see the need. Um, but um, I, and if you are somebody who has any expertise in that area and you want to give some ideas or say, hey, have you heard of this device? Or you might try to get your hands on that. I'd love to hear it um, more about it. Um, we have an outside, it's a pretty big company that services colleges and schools and um, he's been helping to advise. We have a CDC recommended list of cleaning products, but we've also looked through them to make sure that they're environmentally like, and when I say that, I mean even personally environmentally, because you know, sometimes too much cleaning product product and every and you're sneezing everywhere right too so um really trying to um do it in a way that um that that you're able to um but we there's a whole big part of the plan that that's all we're supposed to, we're worrying about and that's all we're we're taking a look at so um you know feel free to email if again if you have ideas or thoughts about that as well and you know, if you want to be on a committee around some of that stuff, because I didn't say to parents and reach out and say, "Will you be on this committee?" But if I knew that you were somebody who might have, we might have reached out. But we don't always know what people's areas. If, if you want to, like, hey, I have time, and I would like to spend some time reviewing whatever it is that we're doing on this in this area, that would be terrific. Um, that would be great. So if there's some areas of this that you, you'd you either like to make sure that you review very thoroughly or you talk, you participate or you're part of the leadership about deciding around it, you are welcome. Um, I, I know Felicia was on this call and I just, um, Felicia's our parent coordinator. If she can um, 
if she is on and wants to say anything, Felicia, maybe not. Diego, can you see if she's on? She might have gotten knocked off. Okay. Um, so for those of you who don't know her or haven't been bothered by her, um, we are fortunate through a couple of different grants to have um, Felicia Smith, who is a, a parent at our school, um, but is also in the past um, worked at Blackstone very part time. It used to it used to be very part time. She um, taught classes for um, health and social emotional um, learning that's her area of expertise but she now is the parent of a student here and she has through some grant funds been able to do a lot more with our uh, parent empowerment and communication and she tr is trying her best and always looking for parents who either have time or expertise and can help in any of these areas or can help us to organize or hear better from um, our parent and family community. Um, so uh, she might have gotten knocked off or she might just be on the phone and we can't tell she's on the phone, but um, she, she also will be reaching out. Okay. Um, and we would like any of you who are parents of new students, whether it's ninth grade or otherwise, if you're able to stay on the call, that would be great. So we could talk a little more. I'm gonna have Crystal talk a little bit more about what's gonna happen on Thursday. Um, I wanna thank everybody for taking this long to be on this call. Um, and I, um, I'm hoping that, um, I look forward to your feedback um, when we put this plan out, which, you know, um, and, I, and I just want you to remember that um, the question from Ride wasn't, what's your ideal way of doing this? It was within these, all these different rules and regs, how will you do this? So um, keep that in mind when you look at it, but also continue to give us feedback and we'll be formally reaching out to you with, um, through email, through um, our alert system and um, on our Facebook page to, um, to get your continuing support as we modify and develop. And uh, we did not want to tell you we're doing something before we know we're doing it. Um, but it's, um, and the plan that goes up tonight might look different in 48 hours because I learned from Ride that something we put in there, we can't do or something, I don't know. But um, we'll try our best to stay consistent and and as predictable as possible in unpredictable times. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, thank you. Thank, you, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And again, stay on the line if you've got a new student coming. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Oh, it's too late, Mom. It's too late. Hi, too late. I didn't get anything. Crystal, you're um, okay. We're going to try and see if you can talk and we can hear you this time or understand you. Sorry. Carolyn, can you hear me okay? Now I can, yes. Thanks. Okay, yeah. I'm Sorry. I'm going to make sure that, yeah, everyone else should be muted. It says that I'm muted, all, but we'll see. I'm going to mute everyone. Right, yeah. And then helpful. you will be able to unmute yourself, okay? Okay. You got to unmute now. Okay, I'll unmute you. There you go. There you go. All right, can you hear me now? Yep. Perfect. All right. So, uh, good evening, parents. Uh, thanks for, for hanging in there. Um, let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Crystal Diaz. I've been at Blackstone for 12 years now, which is wild. It went by that fast. Uh, not only in a, am I an English teacher, but I also a, will be a ninth grade advisor again this year. And so some of you, some of your children may be in my advisory. Some of your children I may actually teach in the classroom as well. So I'm looking forward to that. But I've been tasked with 
how to connect with new students this year and their families. And so part of my job has been thinking about what we normally would do in the spring with your child to get them acclimated to Blackstone and trying to recreate all that we lost um, as much as we can. And so we came up with the idea of having this orientation um, on Thursday with the idea that, again, the name of the game is being flexible. Um, Crystal, I suddenly can't hear you. Are other people having a hard time? Shake your head, Diego and Beth. Okay, Crystal, I'm gonna ask if Beth or Diego could unmute themselves and talk a little bit about what they know about what's gonna happen. Because I know, I know I'm like putting you on the spot, but if we can't hear Crystal, I need a backup. Diego, Hello. can you Beth's guys trying to go. Beth, are you are you going to try to talk, or you would you rather Diego talk? I I can talk. Hi everybody, my name's Beth Thurber. I'm a counselor at Blackstone Academy, and I too will have a ninth grade advisory, and we want to do our best to try to acclimate the students and help them get to know a little bit about our school and how things how things run. So this Thursday, we're planning two session. Um, orientation with the freshmen and with us as advisors um it's 9 to 11 and then 12 to 2. you parents should have received a message from debbie i believe right crystal and she was going to send out a survey i'm not even sure i'm looking at the people that are on this call and i'm not even sure if everybody is a parent of a freshman or our freshman uh, but we all look forward to meeting you guys. Um, and no, the parents are not going to stay. We're going to give you a brief overview of what Blackstone Academy is um, and do some, uh, probably some icebreakers to help us get to know your student. And it's super quick. I'm sure I'm forgetting something here. Um, I just want to add that, first of all, there's going to be a pretty strict and strong <laughs> um, set of, hey, you're going to come in the building and here are the, here's how you're going to work. Um, and, I, and so the students are going to be in there in very small groups with their advisor, um, very small groups. So each advisory is no more than 12. Um, they're going to be in large classrooms and that are set up for 20 safely or 22 safely they're going to be with 12 or less um, it's unlikely that <coughs> all the students are going to come um, and only half of the ninth grade um, will be in the building during um, the the shifts um, and just remind me again because i wasn't i'm not paying enough attention i think it's nine to eleven for one group and That's one two three for the other group and Debbie Reyes, if she hasn't sent it out yet, you will have in the morning which group your student has been assigned to, so what time. And then there will be people greeting the students as they come. Um, we will have markers so that nobody gets jammed up in a line, so people are six feet apart. If they've got a mask, please wear it. If not, we will have them. Um, and we will have, um, folks you know really paying attention to the um the safety of of the students um and staff members because um we have had one group that's met here with 12 students at a time this summer in a extremely large room with two teachers um and it's gone just fine but this actually will be the first time that we would have <coughs> you know um other groups joining us so um i think you know crystal's typing that the main purpose is having having students see the building meet us um and their advisors and it would be great if we get to have a little in-person time before school starts i also want to share with um ninth grade parents that um um that um we we also really um, want to, we want to make it, um, if at all possible, 
during our first week of school, no matter what plan, if there's any plan that allows us to have students in the building, something that I didn't wanna share with the whole group, but I'm gonna share with you, is that we are gonna to try to potentially have some additional days in the first week or two where we just have ninth graders because we feel it's so important that the students get to know <coughs> us and um, you know just their surroundings and our school culture before they're like really into it deep. So that's something we're kind of playing around with, but it's not fully planned. So I don't wanna promise or tell you exactly how it's gonna happen because I don't know, but it's something that we know is a big need um, that we're taking a look at. Um, I don't know and, if you can hear yeah, me. there's going to be video and virtual parts created for anyone who doesn't attend. <coughs> so that will be available too. Can you hear me, Carolyn? No, yeah, hold up. I typed it in the chat, but I guess I just wanted to say the main reason mm -hmm. behind it is obviously we need to be considering safety, but part of what is so special about Blackstone is that relationship building and so we're hoping the sooner we can meet your child the the more comfortable they can be with an adult in the building and getting to know the space that they're going to spend some of their time in and so that's really part of you know what what we're thinking um our students have such close connections and relationships with their teachers and the adults in the building that we're really trying to create that and help you and your child feel comfortable before they come. Um, parents don't need to come in the building. Just drop in and picking them up and they can be in communication with you by, by phone. So, so I there have, will be a, oops, Sorry, I have a question. Please. Uh, um, so th there was uh, said that there's two um, two sections for Thursday. Uh, on that email, does that say like what section uh, our child's gonna be? Uh, okay, I just wanted to make sure if we're gonna like decide or the email already says the time. Yes, thank you for that question. So Debbie will be, um, it's separated by advisory, not like alphabetical or anything like that. And so uh, Debbie will let, the uh, parents know your child is part of this session because it's that, that's when their new advisor will be there to meet them. Um, and so yes, there's a form when you first like pull up, there will be uh, at least two staff members outside with masks and they're gonna do like a, um, like a screening outside and, and see, you know, make sure everything is good. And there will also be a permission slip form that you'll just sign saying like, I know, what's you know what's happening um there are the safety measures i know that the school is taking every adult in the building will have a mask on um at, at one point we actually considered a three-hour session but we didn't really we didn't really end up needing that much time so actually we we brought it down to two and that feels a little bit better so they'll be in the building for a limited amount of time um uh but there will be a form that you'll need to sign uh after the screen check just to make sure they're healthy enough to enter uh the building and of course if you don't feel comfortable with your child coming or something happens that morning where they're not feeling well enough you know we're trying to do everything we can to um make i'm sorry i'm reading in the chat as well uh to create some vid visual and virtual recreations of what we're attempting on on thursday so that no one misses out but again um, if you're comfortable and you're uh, willing, uh, we'd love to have your child come and get to know the building. Uh, what I said to a group of adults earlier was just imagine being a freshman in high school and you're starting school for the first time and you've never been in the building and you don't know what any of the adults look like. And then all of a sudden you get, you know, you get put in a classroom, whether it's virtual or, or in person. Um, and so we really want to begin to create those connections with you and your child. I also, I'm going to just, I have to call out Anna Sharon, because I know that's one parent who's on, and that means that I'm very happy because I think um, your younger child must have gotten off the waiting list, which that's great. 
And I don't know if Anna or anyone else um, that might be a returning parent um, wants to say anything to any of the new families. Um, just giving you a little opportunity if you do. Um, and um, if you don't, that's fine too. And, um, and I also want to say that um, we normally do a pretty intense ninth grade or new student, a uh, new family orientation. Um, I would still like to have something like that for the parents, because I think there's a lot of things about Blackstone you need to know. We have a lot of fun and interesting things, but sometimes quirky things that go on here. And because of all this COVID crazy stuff, you weren't able to learn about them in the way that we normally communicate them. So that's something that we'd like to plan for August as well. Is there anyone else who wants to talk or ask or say anything? There was a, there was a question about busing and obviously we're not in the regular school year. Um, and so I would imagine any parent who is from in Central Falls or Providence or all three cities really, I, um, they would either have to coordinate to take the bus themselves or a parent would have to drop and pick them off, up. Oh, I think the question was like, are we providing transportation? Yeah. Right, well, yeah, we're not gonna be providing transportation for this event. Um, we're not going to be able to do that. Um, uh, parents should drop off and pick up either at 11 or 12, two, depending on your session, right? Um, and I guess I, I will add uh, the permission form that Debbie will send out will explain like all the safety measures that we're taking, but just so that you know, um, in between the sessions before, of course, before the sessions, the school is always being cleaned, but in between the sessions, we're also cleaning any space that was used. And so that's why there's a, there's a time in between. Okay. Somebody on a phone looks like they want to talk or did. Hi. Hi there. This is John. Hi. Hi. Um, I would like to ask a um, question, but now I wait a long time. I forgot all my question. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 my son is Philip. And is that okay? I call you tomorrow. Yep. Somebody's going to be in the office tomorrow at um nine o'clock and um you can call uh, you know best calling tomorrow in the morning but, um, but there's usually someone from nine to three to answer the phone if they can't answer your question then they can they can get your number and i can call or somebody else can call you back oh okay um i want to ask i wait so long i'm sorry because um and now I'm, I'm got stuck. Um, my son have IEP. I know that in um, I didn't get a chance to see the the, the teacher from last year, and I want to see before the school start or the school start, and also um, for the learning distance, learning distance, and for me, did I still? Uh, I still am stuck about that uh, for the, the COVID. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I, okay, maybe I skip that. Wow. So you're breaking up a little, and so I think we're having a hard time understanding. Um, 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 if you type your... Uh, maybe. She's on a phone, so I think it might be hard to type that in. What I'd love you to do, because your voice was breaking up a little and I couldn't fully hear you, if you could just give us a call tomorrow, somebody will, will help you. 
Oh, okay. And answer any of your okay. questions. All right. Thanks. Just because we can't hear you well at all. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank anything, you. Anything else? I'm, I'm going to wrap things up because I know people probably planned on ending a little earlier. Um, but again, I would invite any of you to um, give us a call, send us an email. If you don't reach one person, try another. Um, but we're going nowhere fast, kind of, right? Who's going anywhere? I don't know. I don't know too many people going anywhere. So um, one of us will be, will be around and we'll uh, talk to you about any of your questions or concerns. I really want to thank you all um, for coming tonight. And I want to welcome you officially to Blackstone. Yay. Yay. Yay, we're thrilled you're here. Yes, yes. I would just add that um, I typed this in the chat. Uh, I, I typed this in the chat, but uh, we plan, uh, Beth and myself and five other teachers are welcoming the freshmen as their new advisor. And so our plan is to also reach out in the month of August and whether we see you or not on Thursday and say, hey, like, I just want, I want you to hear my voice. And Eventually, if it's possible, let's do a, a some kind of a Google Meet or a FaceTime, just so that they start to recognize some faces. And the whole goal is to get as much information about your child and whatever their needs are before we start the school year, so that we can have an easier transition. So I thank you all for your time and look forward to meeting your child on Thursday. Yeah, and I mean, if any of you um, <clears throat> wanna, if whether your student has an IEP or not, but you know they have some things that you think we should know, and that's gonna be really important um, that we talk to you before school starts. And we should be reaching out for you, but if, you know, sometimes paperwork doesn't come in that tells us when a student has an IEP, sometimes you have to tell it, believe it or not, especially with the kind of communication that, uh, you know, hasn't been able to happen. Um, you know, uh, we have a hard time getting paperwork from school, other schools right now, or certain schools right now. So um, you, you're gonna be the best source of our information, at least to start. And that's real important to us. And I am gonna say good night and thank you all again for coming and, um, and helping me out here. And we will see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. What's that is?